glory to Jesus. Let us pray. Father, I want to thank you. Thank you for the grace to speak your word once again. I ask that for everyone who will be hearing these words, I pray that the spirit of truth who ministered these words to me, who taught me these things, who showed me these things, I pray that that same spirit will translate these words in your heart and use it to impact your lives in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. Uh, glory to Jesus. Uh, I'm so glad that um, you are joining us today for this teaching. Um, it's a series we've started. This is the fourth teaching in the series. If you have not listened to the rest, I want to advise that you do. Last week's teaching was particularly very wonderful. A brother was talking to us about uh, God's word is truth. And uh, we read from Psalm 138, verse 2, where the psalmist was saying that uh, God exalts his word above his name. God exalts his word above his name. And we need to understand how much God exalts his name. The Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runs into it and is saved. The Bible says, God has given him a name which is above every other name. And the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. So when you understand how great the name of God is, it will give you an idea what the Bible is talking about when it says, God has now exalted his word above this so powerful name. And that was clearly explained uh, during the last teaching. God's name uh, is revealed in what he does. I'm sure you know God has a lot of names. He has been called by all kinds of names. He has been called the Jehovah Jireh. Why did why where did the name come from? Because on that mount, <laughs> I think it's Gibwa or thereabout, God miraculously provided um, a, a ram. You see, he has been called all kinds of names, and this name come because because um, he did something, and through that thing which he did, a name came out. But God is not a doing God. I think I said that in one of the teachings we took earlier. God is a personality. So God wants you to know him more than the things that he does. You know? So, but the word of God on the, on the other side reveals the nature of God. That's the difference. His name reveals the thing he does while uh, his word reveals who he is. Praise the Lord. And like we were told last week, you can, you know, you can, if you follow God's doings, you may miss his word. You may miss his nature. And that's what happened at the beginning. After the men fell, you know, God was dealing with them with mercy. You know, someone like Cain killed his brother and God said, anybody that kills you is going to die, you know. He's going to take your punishment seven times. And because of what God is doing, showing them mercy, 2,000 years down, the world was already ready to self-destruct. And the only remedy was to destroy all mankind. So if you are following the things God does, you may completely miss his person. You may miss his nature. If you just look at, oh, and God destroyed everybody in the world, you may miss his nature if you are following just his name. The personality of God is revealed in the truth of his word. And may God help us to lay hold on this truth in the name of Jesus. And we have said that the word of God is Jesus himself. The word of God is God himself, is Jesus. The Bible calls him the totality of the revelation of God. Praise the Lord. So you see, this is why when you go after the word of God, you are going after Christ. We were told last week that um, not just everything in the Bible is truth. It is, a, it is a compendium of the word of God. It's a compendium of what we call the Bible. In that Bible is the word of God. But if you just go by the letters, uh, it's not going to profit you. 
So you must trust God to reveal the truth to you. We were told last week, in the Bible you see the words of Satan. You see the words of a drunk. You see the words of a fool. You see the words of all kinds of people in the Bible. So when we are saying the Bible is the word of God, we don't mean that everything there you can just take and swallow. There are people who say things that you should not have said. There are people, even some men of God, that say things they shouldn't have said. So God's word is written by the inspiration of God and must be read by the inspiration of God. Otherwise, it will not profit you. It will be letters. It will be, it, you can read the Bible and it will destroy you. <laughs> I hope you know that. God help us in Jesus' name. Praise God. Another thing we learned last week was the difference between fact and truth. We were told that we should not allow our experience to dictate our belief. Many people today, because of their experience, just like we said, because of something that happened to them, or because of something God did for them, or because of how God deals with them, they bring out a doctrine out of that. No, it's not correct. So we must look for truth. It is truth that corrects our experience. We don't use our experience to define the word of God. So as God's children, we must be determined that whether I get result or I don't get result, whether my experience agree or my experience does not agree, I am going to stand and defend what God's word says. Um, Hebrews, the book of Hebrews tells us the all of fame of people who believed God and yet did not see what they believed for. The Bible says, toward the last verse, he said, all these died, not receiving the promise. All of them looked forward to a city. All of them looked forward to the days when Jesus will be revealed. But they didn't see that promise fulfilled in their days. But they kept on believing and they stood by it even till their death. We got the person in the name of Jesus. Today we'll be speaking about a continuation from last week's teaching, and the topic is faith and God's word. Faith and God's word. Praise the Lord. Now, it is important we know that faith is the best approach you need to apply to the word of God. Many people believe on the other hand or teach on the other hand that uh, you should do. And of course, the Bible emphasizes doing. The Bible says, don't be hearers alone, but doers. But you see, the way you do the word of God is by faith. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6, the Bible says, For without faith it is impossible. To please God. Why do you want to do what the Bible commands? Why do you want to do what God's word commands? It is because you want to please God. But yet the Bible says, without faith, it is completely impossible to please God. So you see, you need faith in your journey of pleasing God. If you try to do the things God's word says, and you did not do it by faith, you will end up not pleasing God, you will end up offering to God an offering that is unacceptable. Because everything, the Bible says, everything that is not of faith is sin. That's in Romans chapter 14, verse 23 or thereabout. Whatever is not of faith is sin. Praise God. So it is important that we know this. Faith is what pleases God, not your deeds. And when the Bible asks you to do the things God's word says, God expects you that you will have learned that all things can only be done by faith. The biggest thing God will ever ask you to do, no matter how great it is, the only way to do it accordingly is by faith. It's by believing in God. That's how we get things done. When Jesus told Peter, walk on the water, how did he walk on water? by faith praise the lord you see examples in the bible uh, uh abraham the bible says abraham believed god it was counted to him for righteousness he believed god counted him as righteous 
Mary also, the Bible says, believed God. And uh, when Elizabeth was prophesying, Elizabeth said, Blessed is he, is she that believed what she had, because there shall be a performance. All these people, God's word came to them, and their approach, their first response was faith. And this pleases God. On the other hand, we have uh, uh, Zechariah, the, the, the priest. You know, the, 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 uh, the angel Gabriel gave him the word of God. And his response was, how can this thing be? How will this thing happen? <laughs> and Gabriel said, are you kidding? Don't you know who I am? I am Gabriel that stands in the presence of God. <laughs> he told his, uh, Zechariah, he declared his CV. How will I bring you the word of God? And you, you a great priest as you are, you'll be questioning me and asking me how will it happen? And he told him, he said, you will be dumb for the next nine months. So you see, God does not joke with his words. When faith is not applied to his word, he does not please the heart of God. There's another man in um, 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 1 and 2. We, we know the story. Elisha came and said, by this time tomorrow, <laughs> Uh, one liter of petrol will be sold in Nigeria at one naira. <laughs> and uh, this man is <laughs> Oh, I loved. And he said, even if God should open the windows of heaven, it can never happen. And Lesha told him, another word came forth. <laughs> and that word says, you will see it with your eyes, but you will not taste from it. Praise the Lord. And eventually, that is what happened. So as God's children, we must be determined, we must be violent about applying faith to the word of God. Revelation chapter 21 verse 8, the Bible talks about people who will go to hellfire. And the number one on the list, what is it? The fearful. Revelation chapter 21 verse 8. And fear is a product of faithlessness. Fear, the fearful. That's number one. Number two, it says the unbelieving. Some of us would have thought that uh, murder will be on top of the list or fornication will be on top of the list. But the very first thing that was mentioned that would take a man to hellfire is fear. And fear is a direct opposite of faith. Now, but the second thing that was mentioned, immediately after fear was mentioned, was unbelief. That's why Jesus said, I think it's in uh, John chapter 14, that the sin the Holy Spirit is coming to convict is the sin of unbelief because they did not believe in me. May God help us in the name of Jesus. So quickly I'm going to mention, give us about five points on what we need to know about our faith on God's word. About five things I'm going to mention. Number one, it is faith in God and not faith in man. This may seem very simple, but we need to emphasize it. Faith is in God. It is not faith in yourself or faith in someone else. Of course, believing in yourself is not wrong as long as what you are, who you are believing in is who God says you are. Okay, that will not be wrong. But teaching, your, teaching people to believe in themselves outside of God's will and design for their life, that will be wrong. It is faith in God. So when you believe in yourself, what you are saying in essence would be that you believe in what God will do through your life. You believe in what God can produce from your life. Your, your life will be going towards a direction that is completely opposite to your dream and your vision. But you say, no, no matter how far I go, I am still going to believe in what God will make out of my life. I was speaking to a brother some days ago and I told him, I said, you must put your trust in the God of Jacob. Jacob is that one man who was going his own way, but there was a covenant on his head. That covenant, despite all his mistakes and, uh, and all, all, all the mistakes he made in life, were all tailored towards his destiny. Praise the Lord. So you see, praise the Lord. So it is important that we put our faith in God. And not in ourselves, and not in man. Another thing we need to know about that is that it is easy to put your faith in God. It is easy to put your faith in God when you know that God is faithful. 
Just like we learned last week, when you know that God is true, when you know that whatever it is that God has spoken from his mouth, when God speaks, the power to perform what he has spoken goes with it. You must have an absolute unflinching trust in God. Trust that what God has promised he will perform. That is faith in God. That is faith in God. You must believe that God does. These are the things I remind myself every time. That God cannot lie. There are three scriptures very dear to my heart. They are very close. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 16. The Bible says, For by two immutable, by two unmovable things that in which it is impossible for God to lie. Romans 3, verse 4, the Bible says, Let God be true and all men be liars. Numbers 23, verse 19, the Bible says, God is not a man. That he should lie. And anytime Satan comes with a thought about something bad that will happen to me, that's one of the things I confront him with. I, 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 I will ask him, since, since when did God die? Since when does his word lose his potency? Since when does God begin to lie? If we have said he will provide, that's what I'm going to get. Since when did God begin to lie? Why would Satan be telling me that something bad will happen to me or to my family? Since when the, the God our protector begins to lie? He said he will protect. He said he will give his angels charge over me. They will keep me and guide me in all my ways, lest I dash my foot against the stone. Since when does God's word begin to fail? That is your approach. You must be violent about believing God. You will be determined that in your days, you will prove the faithfulness of God. That is how we that is why we say it is faith in God. And that thing that is important to add to that, it's it is faith. I don't know how to put it, it is faith in your God, faith in my God. Many people know a God of uh, of, 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 of Elijah. They know the God of Peter. They know the God of all kinds of men of God. But they have not, he has not become their own God. You must get to a place where you understand that everything that is written in the word of God is about me. It's not about some men of God out there. It's not about some preacher. It's not, it's not, for, it's not about some white people. It's not about some, some great people, some holy people. No, no, no. Everything the Bible says, all the promises of the Bible, they are for you. There's a place in 1 Corinthians that says that all the promises of God are unto us, yes, and amen. That's what the Bible says. It says, and it is produced through our faith. I can't get that scripture very correctly now. So all the promises of God are unto us, yea, yes, and amen to the glory of God by us that's what it says god gets the glory but you get the enjoyment how because you believe that everything written in god's word is for you when people there is no body on earth even unbelievers believe there is nothing god cannot do so many believing that god can do anything does not change your life many believe that many, many believe that everything is possible with god it does not change your life it's just like if you have somebody as should be ministering in the church as it is, and I should call somebody who is probably paralyzed, for example. And I said, Young man, you are paralyzed, come forward. And then I should ask the church, Church, how many of you believe that God can raise this man from the wheelchair? Everyone will say, Yeah, so yes, God can do it. Glory. How many of you believe that God can raise him up? Oh, yes, God can do it. Okay, then I should say, so who among you will come forward and raise him up, pray for him to be raised from the chair? All from, of all the people that are saying, yes, yes, yes. You mean somewhere that nobody will come out? Why? Because merely believing that God can do it is not equal to believing that he will do it for you. I hope you get that. You must personalize your God. You must personalize your father. I'm still going to talk about that. That's what Jesus came to show. He is my father. He must become your father. You must personalize him. You must understand the Bible was written for me. The promises are for me. They are not for some people in church. 
they are not for some 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 earlier than thou people they are written for me he is my god he is my father when you come to know that faith will become easy praise the lord praise jesus because of time i'm going to go to number two number two faith comes by hearing faith comes by hearing romans chapter 10 verse 17 we know the scripture but always says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of god we must understand this very importantly and just like we learned last week not all you it's not every preacher that preach truth you know when it comes to the truth of God's word. You must understand some as hearing the God's word. There are two things that are fundamental. Christ must be taught. Jesus must be taught. Secondly, faith must be taught. When preaching focuses only on what you need to do, that is not a complete, a balanced gospel. A balanced gospel focuses more on who you are, on what God has made you to be, on what Christ has done to give you the life you are, you are expected to live. So Christ is mentioned, faith is mentioned, that it is done by faith. If you can't find Christ in a teaching, you can't find faith in a teaching, you can't find pleasing God in a teaching, then you may be up against a lie. Praise the Lord. So it is important that we know this. Truth must be heard. And the moment you hear, you know, that the Bible did not say faith comes when you hear the word of God. No. It says faith comes by hearing. There must be consistent hearing. You must be hearing it repeatedly. I don't know, if you eventually pick one or two things from this message, it will not be enough to carry you through. Many years ago, I had a problem with offenses. And there is this 28 minutes teaching by Joel Austin on, um, on dealing with offenses. I, I think I listened to that message probably up to 50 times, if I'm not going to exaggerate. Listen, just 28 minutes, over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. And I'm not recommending Joel Austin, okay? <laughs> Praise the Lord. But then, that teaching blessed me tremendously and I listened to it over and over again until that life was produced out of me. I got to a place where it became almost impossible for you to offend me. So it is important you hear over and over. There are books I have read two or three times. Books. Most times an average message I listen to it at least two times. And there are some I listen to more than two or three or four times. Because faith comes by what? By hearing. And it's not limited only to hearing. It also has to do with meditating. By God's reading this series, we will talk about meditation and we will talk about studying. Uh, God's word. Just stay with us. We are talking about practical ways to meditate and practical ways to study. Two ways through which you can repeatedly help yourself with God's word is by meditating. Or by studying continuously, repeatedly. When you do this consistently, faith will be born. You get to times to come in your life when, when faith is needed. You just dip your hands into your treasury of God's word and faith will be born. And I'll, I'll, I'll just give you an example. I have, I have seen myself demonstrate some kind of faith that they are only once, <laughs> once in a long time kind of faith. Years ago when I was in school, Pumped up by God's word, I was uh, I was I was an executive. I, I, I need to give you a little background so that you would not uh, you will understand what is going on. Because sometimes when people give us testimonies, you don't get the full picture, and sometimes you just think it's automatic. Okay, so I was I was an executive in two fellowships. I was president in one. I was coordinator in another. Coordinator in another and I also. And I had I attend every single meetings of these fellowships. Like I, each of these um, fellowships have minimum of three services per week. Some have four. So practically from Sunday to Sunday, 
um, engage in the fellowship activity. I don't miss meetings. I don't miss fellowship services. I attend all. <laughs> and then I have my school to deal with. And on this faithful day, uh, I wanted to go. I, okay, my plan was, uh, since my life is already structured, I need to plan uh, myself. I need to plan myself. So I will be able to go to the library. And I have not done my library registration. So I need to do my library registration. I had gone there the day earlier, and the, the man told me that I need to bring uh, two copies of my passport. So on this faithful day, I already planned that, okay, I left school around two. I have program in church by five. I'm going to go to the um, library and read from two to five so that I will attend uh, the service. So I got to the librarian. Okay, so bring out your passport. I did put mine to my bag and I was I, I found only one passport. The other passport was at home. And I remembered I kept that passport on my mirror. I remembered vividly. Wow, I forgot. And I tell you, at that moment, the spirit of faith kicked in. Kai, I want to encourage you. Spend time in God's word. At that moment, when you need it, only one word will be enough. By God, we talk about prayer. I want to talk about prayer. You understand that results is not in the multitude of prayers. Prayers is not to the end of multitude of results. When you have spent time properly in God's word, when you need things, you don't spend time praying for them. You make demand, you make requests, and those things are done immediately or near immediately. Prayer is designed to fellowship. It's not a place to be talking about demons and talking about your life problems. We, we, we get to prayer by God's grace in a, in a couple of weeks or months. So at that moment, I came out of the library and I spoke one word. I said, I am going to walk from where I am. There's a building opposite that building. We call it CCE building. I said, I'm going to walk from here to that CCE building. And I said, God, send your angel. Please remember that. There is no scripture that gives us permission to command angels. No scripture. Angels serve us, but they obey God. They listen to God. So when you need an angel to operate in your life, you speak to God and God instructs the angel. Praise the Lord. So I said, Father, send your angel to my house. Let that angel pick up that passport put it in my bag so that by the time I walk to that next building, I am going to check my bag and I will find that passport there. The spirit of faith kicked in. I wouldn't have done that on my own. And I, I don't think I've tried that ever again since that time. But the spirit of faith kicked in instantly and I was able to speak that word forth and I walked from there to the other side, checked the bag and the passport was there. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. So when you spend time, the Bible says, study to show yourself approved. They work when I need to be actually rightly dividing the word of truth. You must soak yourself in the word of God. When you soak yourself in God's word, when life punches you, God's word comes out. When life tries to squeeze you, God's words will come out. But when you soak yourself with seasonal movies and soak yourself with all kinds of songs, okay, when life squeezes you, what comes out? Your, your Telemundo and the, and the Bollywood and Z World, they will respond to the talent of your life. We got a person in the name of Jesus. So it is important that we meditate, we hear consistently. At that moment when you need that faith to kick in, you won't have to, you won't, you won't even be faced with fear. I can give you other examples of how faith kick in like that and the result is spontaneous. I had a similar and I explained when I was in school. We have been okay, I'm, I'm going to reserve this testimony to uh, the, the seventh to the last point because it's more peculiar to that. There was another instance where my, I think my, my brother was um, was doing something for me or there about, and in, at the process, uh, he, he lost his phone. And when he called me, he said, I, 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 I just lost my phone. And at that moment, the spirit of faith kicked. I, sincerely, I have several uh, times like that. 
It's not something that happens every time. But you know, when you are soaked and when life stabs you, it just comes out. It's not something, don't look at it as he's such a man of faith. No, it doesn't, it's not like that. The Ruba said it's what, what the, 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 the bird eats that he flies with. When you soak yourself with God's word, when you need faith to, 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 to be produced, it will be spontaneous. People look at you like you are being crazy, but you are, you are coming from a world, from a treasury. Praise the Lord. So he just told me, he said, I, 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 I lost my phone while traveling. I lost it in the car and I can't find it. And immediately I spoke a word. And I said, you are going to find that phone. That's what I told him. And I meant it. And the following morning, I was so confident about the word that I had spoken that I sent him a text. I said, have you found your phone? If you have not found it, get ready. You are going to find the phone. Completely unmoved. How did I know I was going to find it? I cannot tell you how did I know it was going to I cannot all I know was that faith was activated at the moment. And I think a day or two after, he received the call. This was the phone that the battery was dead. Somebody found the phone, plugged the phone, charged the phone, and tried to reach him to return the phone. Faith comes by what? By hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Faith is based on knowledge. So it is even the spirit of faith, it, it's not just spontaneous. It also comes from a wealth, from a treasury of God's word that has been set to, that has become a fortress in your life. Fear is a fortress. It, is, it comes by knowledge. Faith is also a fortress that comes by knowledge. You need, it is your choice to choose your fortress. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. I go to number three. I'm giving you five points about faith and God's word. Number three. All believe. Only few are patient. All believe. Few are patient. Many of us, everything we know about faith is the sharp, sharp faith, just like the one I told you. <laughs> sharp, sharp faith, where you command and instantly the result comes. And you know, it's cool. Uh, it's, it's great. And many times, uh, it, should, it should be like that. But that is not enough. If you have not yet understand the place of patience in the matters of faith, then your understanding of faith is incomplete. Hebrews is verse 2, the Bible says, Let us be followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promise. Hebrews 10, verse 23, the Bible says, Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful. I've said that before. For he is faithful, that promise. When you understand that faithful is he that promised, then patience should not be difficult. Praise the Lord. And we need to understand this balance. I just need to say this very quickly. You need to understand uh, what we need to understand God's kind of patience, uh, woman's limitation kind of patience, and um, and getting results immediately. I don't know if that makes any sense to anybody, but I'm going to try and explain. Patience. Uh, as two types there is a patience that is based on human limitations let's say you are you are, you are, you are, you are, you are, you are trusting God for your healing you have laid your hand on your head and say in the name of Jesus I am healed sickness I command you in the name of Jesus pack your load and go sickness is not for me because you are speaking to sickness it is important it is, it is important that the spirit uh, that is sponsoring that sickness will live immediately. And you start feeling better immediately. Because here is a spiritual battle. Spiritual battles are won instantly. Praise the Lord. So you see, when you are giving those kind of instructions, you should see results immediately. There are some things like that, that 
great covers for them to be supplied instantly. But there are some other cases where um, you pray like that for healing and the healing does not come immediately. It could be for two reasons. It could be because your faith is not strong enough to receive it immediately or sometimes what you have spoken has even uh, 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 it has even been affected already. But don't be patient to see the results. So these are some, I, I don't know if uh, the scope of this teaching will allow me to explain these things in full. Because you see believers uh, going through some kind of things and they are, and they are, they, 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 they are dealing with some challenges in their life, especially like sickness, and they are being patient for, to see the hand of God on, on, for their healing on a sickness, and they are there for five, six, seven years, ten years, still waiting for their for their for their healing. That's not scriptural. Everybody Jesus that met Jesus was healed immediately. He didn't say, "Okay, okay, okay." Uh, bad news. I, I I have prayed for your for your eyesight now. Uh, bad news. You need to have some patience. Uh, uh, by the grace of God, before the end of. Uh, uh, yeah, what year are we? So, yeah, we are in year uh, 502. Okay, by the end, by, by, by 5022, you will see your, your eyes will see clearly. No, no, not at all. So, when Jesus prays for a healing, healings are the children's bread, they come immediately. There are times when he has to lay hands on somebody two times, but yet it is still within a short time. So, healing is not something you exercise patience over. I need to. Clarify this. It doesn't mean you don't need patience. You may need patience uh, because of the limitations of your own self, of your own faith. Okay? But th that patience is not a patience ordained by God. There are some patients that are within God's planning, like growing, like changing. There are some things you cannot hasten. You cannot pray yourself to become 30 years. You are, you are 25. You want to pray yourself to become 30 years within one day. It's not going to happen. Or probably you don't have beards. You, are, you want to pay yourself to grow beards <laughs> within one week. It's not going to happen. Some things are in process. So the seeds of God's word are sown and you patiently wait for them to grow. Some things are like that that must go through the principle of patience. Like when Jesus caused the tree, uh, the, the fig tree in Matthew chapter 11, when he caused the tree, the tree did not dry up immediately. The Bible says they went to, to the temple, they went back home the following day. While they were coming back, that was when they saw that the tree had been dried up. So, sometimes like that, some time needs to, to, to pass for you to see the things that you are praying for. But for the things that are covered, I don't know, I don't know if uh, this point is being communicated appropriately. I didn't prepare to talk about this. I just feel, if you're talking about patience, you must understand the balance. Because I've seen Christians suffer. They suffer tremendously in the hands of the devil and they are claiming they are being patient. There is no place for patience with the devil in the Bible. Have you seen it in the Bible? Be patient with the devil, for you are going to see the result in due time. No. The Bible says, when you see the devil, you resist him. You cast him out. So, every time you see the work of the devil, the everything that is called the work of the devil in your life must go instantly. It must come to an end immediately. You must wait a little for the result to come, but you must see the result quickly and fast because it is the work of the devil and it must go. But for operations that requires time to pass, those are where patience is necessary, like waiting for Jesus, like seeing yourself change, like seeing your business grow. Some things require patience. We got a person in the name of Jesus. Luke 8 verse 15, the Bible says uh, that you bring forth fruit uh, with patience. We got a person in the name of Jesus. So patience is necessary uh, in the teaching of faith. The man we call the, the father of faith was patient. Patient for 35 years before he saw the promise. Praise the Lord. That was not the work of the devil. That was God's dealings with him. And of course, people also believe that it took uh, Abraham those 35 years to completely 
trust God completely. That is that also happens. So you must understand the place of faith uh, in the New Testament and know the place of faith and patience and not uh, misunderstand. Of course, in the New Testament, if uh, barrenness has been paid for uh, on, the, on the on the cross, so you should not be barren another month. Okay, if you are listening to me. And uh, the world have called you by, and God doesn't call you by. And I pray that in the name of Jesus, in the next nine months, you will carry your child in the name of Jesus. And if you want children, you will carry your children in the name of Jesus. So you cannot say, Oh, I, oh I'm like uh, Abraham, too. I have been patient for 20 years. No, no, that was the Old Testament. In the New Testament, that has been paid for, and you should, this part of the things that you should receive instantly and the book the operation of the devil over your life put it to an end and expect your baby praise the lord okay so number four because of time faith number four faith is voice activated faith is voice activated this is also another very, very important aspect of faith and God's word that we need to know. Second Corinthians 4, verse 13. Paul was quoting Psalm 116, verse 10. And he said, He said, We having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed. And therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. Speaking is a result of faith. You cannot claim you believe something and don't speak it. Speaking does not necessarily mean that you start telling everybody. No. But you must be. That's, those are part of things we discuss in prayer also. When you believe something, you must speak it boldly. You must speak it repeatedly. That is a principle of faith. Many people just think that as, as long as I believe it in my heart, it's enough. No. You must speak your faith. Romans 10, verse 6 to 10. Let's read that scripture. It's a powerful scripture that explains this. Romans chapter 6. Romans Roman chapter 10, I mean. From verse 6 to 10. Okay. It says, Knowing this, that our old man is crucified. Oh, sorry. I should be reading Romans 10, not Romans 6. Romans 7, verse 6. But the righteousness of faith, listen. But the righteousness of faith says this. Can you see? The faith is a speaking faith. Do not say in your heart, who shall ascend unto heaven? See, this is not what that faith you say. <laughs> you see, it, is not, it does not say, who shall descend into the deep? That is to bring up Christ again from the dead. But what does that faith say? That faith says the world is near you. Even where? Even in your mouth and in your heart. Can you see? It is not a faith in your heart alone. It is a faith both in your mouth and in your heart. And if you are not careful, there are times when it is when that word continues in your heart, in your mouth that it gets registered in your heart. And many of the things we call prayer is actually trying to align our mind and our heart and our mouth together. He says the world is in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we proclaim. Now listen, it's verse 9. Says, because if you confess the Lord Jesus, confess it with the mouth. If you confess and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. And verse 10 says, For with the heart one believe unto righteousness and with the mouth one confesses unto salvation can you see that speaking and faith they come together 
Many Christians do not know this and they have suffered. They have lost grip on what they believe because they are not speaking it. You must speak, uh, you must keep on speaking what you believe. You must be speaking it. If you need to tell people, tell people, but telling people is not enough. Or sometimes it will be difficult to be telling people what you believe because it may be too big to tell. But in your place of prayer, in your place of meditation, that is what you do. You continue, continue to speak it. I believe, therefore, I speak. I, I said I was going to give a, 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 a testimony on, 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 uh, on this aspect. Many years ago, I was privileged to be president of a fellowship. It's a fellowship of about uh, 400 to 500 members as a thing. And um, there is something I always say, speak on the pulpit. I say, I always say that a member of that fellowship, I don't want to mention the name, the member of this fellowship cannot die. I just mentioned, there's something bad in mentioning. It was, uh, the fellowship was GSF. So I would say, GSF fights cannot die. I always say that, that you, you are unpayable, you cannot be killed, you cannot die before your time. And that is a word that gets spoken forth repeatedly. So on this faithful day, I was work. I can see the member very really. I was walking to school, and I received a call from my vice president, and he told me that a young man which I have seen a day before by the name Tega, he said, You just give me a call now that Tega is dead. They have shaken him, they have touched him, he was not moving. He was stiffened, he was gone, lifeless and breathless. And immediately he spoke that word. I spoke. I, that word I was speaking, I spoke it again. I said, GSA fights cannot die. That was the word. Listen, if you are not on the outer side people, be offensive with your faith. I pray that God will be able to, to speak about the, 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 the armor of God. You must be offensive. Some of us are too defensive. You must be offensive. You must be able to say that I cannot die before my time. Some of us are afraid to say things like that. You must be offensive. You must be on the offensive. Don't wait till the enemy fight you before you start praying. Be on the offense. No devil in hell can kill me. I can never be involved in an accident. What? I am not saying this because I am special or because... I, I have a big faith. No, there is no man with a big faith. There are only men who are who know that there is a God who is faithful and who keeps his word and who put their trust in that God. So when I spoke that word forth, I told him, I said, Where am I going to meet you? We are going to his house to go and raise him up. That's what I said. I said, GSFIs cannot die. That's what I said. So immediately I called him, we met, and we advanced to his house. When we got to his house, to the glory of us, we met this young man brushing his teeth outside. Everybody was surprised. Everybody was, was dumbfounded. What happened? What is going on? I understood. So when we got talking to him, this young man had been to a fire. <laughs> he had been to a fire. But the power of God pulled him out. Why? Because there has been a confession. See? If you are not prepared for the day of, 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 and the Bible says, it says if you fail in the day of adversity, your strength is small. You must develop capacity. You must develop strength. Even if it was some other days, I would have, as I heard that, take care, I would say, yay, are you new? I would say, ah, while I did. You see, the very first word you speak when you hear about problem is very important. Sometimes when, when bad news comes like that, those bad news are lies from the devil that have not yet been established. Kai, I pray. I pray that the Lord Himself will interpret these things to your heart in the name of Jesus. Sometimes when bad news comes, those bad news have not, they are still lies from the devil. They have come to request for your support. They have come to request for your acceptance. Those bad news have come to request for your cooperation. So the very first word you release when bad news come determines whether you accept or you reject the light of the devil. 
So if that word have come and I have responded with fear, ah, the boy I saw just yesterday, then what happened? And I've responded with 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 trembling, and I've said, "Hey, let's get up. We need to pray. We need to fast." I would have been responding in fear, not in faith. But when that I, I tell you, I've seen reports of some people that have died, and I, the way I've responded, myself, I had to ask myself, "Brother, which kind of response is that?" And those people, I have prayed for their for them to come, and they refuse to come back because you see, I was not pumped up for those kind of things. But for that one, I was pumped. And the word was spoke forth, and I believe in that word went forth. Satan would do his lies. Praise the Lord. You have a man of God like that. Whose child also died. They called the, 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 the son called. Ha, ah, our other son is dead. And the first thing he said, he said, the first word that came out of his mouth, because he had been listening to God's word by another preacher, is that he said he responded with this word. He said, the first report is not the last report. That's the word that came out from his mouth. Somebody whose son had just died. That should be trembling and crying and weeping and howling. The first thing that came out of his mouth was, the first report is on the last report. And he and his wife, they prayed together, they entered their car and were driving back, driving to the morgue. And they were praising God all the way to the morgue, thanking God for what he has done. Not so that we do it. When we get to prayers by God's way, we talk about prayers and thanksgiving. And the place of thanksgiving and faith. People need to know how these two are connected. By the time they got to the morgue, this child that had already been put in the morgue, closed with a toe tag, came back to life before they got there. You must be filled. The Bible says, let the word of God dwell in you richly. Richly. God's word must dwell in you richly. So faith is voice activated. I can give you a lot of examples. I have a similar example uh, last year. All of us know what uh, happened to finance last year for, for a contractor like me. Uh, you know, we were home. And even when I was at home, that was 2020. This, is, this was uh, around March, April. Some small work was still coming and uh, there, are, there, are, there are also... Um, there are also uh, savings that also help them all, but God was meeting the needs and all. But you know, in the midst of all of those, there is a word I kept on saying. I kept on saying that something big is coming. I kept on saying that. 2020 may be terrible, may be like the year that may look like nobody wants to build anymore, nobody wants to do this, nobody wants to do that. Right in the middle of when that... Uh, when when the the, 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 the the pandemic was hot, project there was a project I was still doing. But this is a project, very small project, just uh, four bedroom and all, uh, two bed, four units of two bedroom flats and all. So for me, this is this is, this is not this is not, this is not God's plan for me for 2020. God's plan, God's not going to change His plan for me now because now He's surprised that the, that the pandemic showed up. No, so I kept on saying something big is coming. I told my workers. So something big is coming. And you see, in July, something became something bigger than I've ever had before. Bigger than ever. Almost times three, times four of what I had in the year before. And much more open doors, open doors came around. Why? Because what I believe, I kept on speaking. I told my wife too, something big is coming. Something big is coming. I will smile and I'll say something big is coming. When it looks like things are going bad, I will smile. I will say something big is coming. When, when it looks like the, the, the year before is the best ever, I smile and I say something big is coming. It was, your faith must speak. Because of time, I'll go to the last one. Number five. Faith is activated through understanding of the natural. Faith is activated <clears throat> through the understanding of the physical. Natural or physical, both will go. Now, this may seem very strange, but this is something God taught me. While I was studying my Bible, I think, last year. Praise the Lord.
Romans chapter 1, verse 20, the Bible says, For the invisible things of the Godhead are clearly seen in the things that are made. So you see, the Bible is not only the revelation of God's word. Now, I don't mean that you don't balance everything else with the word of God. But I'm saying that the Bible is not only the means through which God communicates to us. Psalm 145, verse 10 to 12, the Bible says, The works of God, they declare His glory. The heavens declare His glory. The heavens declare His mighty work. So you see, the things that are made, the physical world that we live, they are also communicating to us the mysteries of God. And I tell you, one of the greatest ways to, 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 to really tap in, to, to find rest in faith is true understanding through the things that you see. Now, it will not make sense to you yet, but I'm going to give some illustrations. There are three people in the Bible who are seen to be great people. The first one is Abraham. And in Genesis chapter 15, from verse 1 to 6, Abraham told God, he said, God, I don't have a son, but there is this slave in my house, the chief of my slaves. Is it the one that will inherit everything I have? And God said, no, you will definitely have a son. I will give you a son. <laughs> and how was God going to communicate faith to Abraham? God said, come outside. Stand. Lift your face up and look towards the stars. Count the stars. And I believe that Abraham began to count. He counted to a point he got tired. He probably said, God, I've counted and counted. In fact, I was counting this one. As I was counting it, this, this middle year, it's as if it's, they are up to their hundred year. I'm never, he kept on counting and counting. And in the middle of that counting, God spoke to him. God said, you see these stars as many as they are, uncountable, difficult for you to count, so shall your seed be. Your seed shall be uncountable. And the Bible says in verses, it says that, and Abraham believed in God, and it was counted to him for righteousness. He earned his title, Abraham, the father of faith. How? Because there was an illustration. There was something in the physical that communicated faith in God to him. And I tell you, you must find something like that in your own life too. There are two other examples in the New Testament. There are two people in the New Testament that Jesus said are the greatest faith. Jesus himself was surprised. Jesus said, ah, ah, I've never seen this kind of faith anywhere before. Two people. The first one, Matthew 8, verse 8 to 10. It's the story, I believe, of the, uh, of the centurion. You know, the centurion sent to Jesus. Uh, and he said, Jesus, my, I have a servant who is dying. I need you to come and heal him. And Jesus said, no problem, I'm coming. And Jesus started coming to heal him. And in the middle, he changed his mind. He sent him back. He said, no, 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 no. Tell Jesus not to come. Tell him not to come. He said, why? He said, tell Jesus to speak his word only and my servant will be healed. That is one faith that hardly will see anybody that will believe that. Ah, if I, the, remember the woman, the, the, there's this woman that came to meet Elisha. Uh, this, this woman that is, the, 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 the daughter died, the son died. And he sent for, he came to meet Elijah. He said, you have, you have, you have killed me. All is not well known. He said, please, my, this, I told you I don't want the son. He gave me a son and now he's dead. Please come and wake the son up. Elisha, the man of God, said, Okay, Gaius, let's stand up. Carry my rod. Go and lay it on the child. And when you lay it, the child will wake up. Eh, eh. The woman said, mm -hmm. No, it is you that I want to go dear yourself. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, 
because he said it is you I want, he don't even though they just went and put the rod, nothing worked until Elisha come because that is what our faith would carry. But there was a man that said, I am a man under authority. I understand how authority works. I understand when I command a servant, they answer. When I tell them to go, they go. When I tell them to come, I come. Just as I understand this in the physical, this gave me a full understanding and a full revelation that you are Jesus. And I know that everything that is created is subject to you. And if you speak your word only, my servant will be healed. And Jesus said, wow, I have never seen this kind of faith before. Praise the Lord. Matthew chapter 15. This was the story of the other person, the Syrophoenician woman. Jesus said, I was not sent to your family. I was not sent to your tribe. Please go away. The woman said, no, Jesus, help me. Help me. Jesus said, no, I can't help you. Say, don't you get? I can't give the food of the children and give to dogs. The woman took, lay hold on that illustration, Kai, and her faith was born. You know, we're just saying it's only passing. The woman grabbed hold of that illustration. Something natural that he could understand to lay hold on faith. And she said, Jesus, yes, I agree, I'm a dog. But even dogs eat from the crumbs that fall from the table. And Jesus said, Wow, I have never seen so great faith before. How was the woman able to display a faith that made Jesus himself surprised? An illustration. An illustration. One of the reasons Jesus kept on preaching his days with parables is because he wanted to communicate faith to the people. If you think all about the parables is just to confuse the enemies. No. Jesus used the things that they could see, the things that they could understand to communicate to them what they could not understand. He used physical things to communicate heaven to them to communicate spiritual things to them you believe if they can understand many of them are farmers and uh, they are farmers you see so you see many of the parables of jesus was centered around their work their farming their 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 household work their selling their marriage their what else all kinds of things that is around their life when the thing jesus used to communicate god's words to them communicate faith to them and one of the things that Jesus tried to communicate with us that as God's children, this is something you must hold unflinchingly with your heart is that God is your father. And Jesus made this as clear as possible repeatedly to show you that if you have seen the best father in the world, that best father is evil compared to God. That's an illusion that helps me. He is my father. And when I think about my heavenly father, and I think about how good he is. And when the Bible tells me that God is better than my father, I get an understanding. And when I read about other fathers, good fathers, great fathers, see how they treat their sons, give me an understanding of how better my father will treat me. These are illustrations, things that you can see with your eyes that should help you to lay hold on faith unshakable. Illustrations helps. To build great faith. God help you to build your faith in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I'm just going to stop there. There's some other things I want to share, but time is against us. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you. Thank you for speaking to us. Thank you because your word is true. Thank you for the unction and for the anointing to speak your word. I pray and I ask that for everyone who have heard these words that you produce faith in their life to receive the best that God has for their work with Him in every aspect. And if there's anybody trusting God for anything, help them to lay hold on faith to receive all that God wants for them in the name of Jesus. And if there's anything that I've not been able to explain properly, Holy Spirit, you are a teacher. Speak it better. Transform lives to the praise and glory of your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. God bless you. And have a great evening ahead. See you next week.
Hallelujah. We believe you have been blessed by this wonderful teaching. Other SGS teachings are available on our YouTube channel. Kindly do well to like, subscribe, and turn on the notification icon in order to receive updates about our SGS teachings. You can also drop your comments and questions after the broadcast. We also have the compressed audio version of this teaching and other teachings on our Telegram platform. Join us again next week for another round of Encounter with God. Remain blessed. Shalom.